What's going on guys? So in this video, I want to go over how to completely assemble a sealed differential for most of the Traxxas 110 scale cars. Um, so I'm doing this for a slash two wheel drive. And basically this is a complete differential with 50K diff oil inside. Uh, all the planetary gears, everything is pretty much done. Um, so I'm going to go over in this video, like the easiest way to be able to build this yourself um, if you wanted to. Now, um, also, we do sell this uh, differential gear complete on our shop, uh, you know, full with oil and uh, the planetary gears. So if you guys are interested in purchasing one and you don't want to do this yourself and you would just like to buy, uh, you know, just a complete differential plug and play, take out the old, put in the new, um, you guys can. So I'm going to leave the link in the description for those that are interested. Um, that being said, let's get started and let's go ahead and build this so you guys could see what the process involved. Uh, it's really not that difficult. It can be a little bit tedious um, and you guys will see what I mean in just a second. So let's get to it. So the first thing I want to do is uh, this is basically the differential housing. So obviously we're going to need that. So let's go ahead and uh, cut this up and just open it. And, and this is the differential housing. It's, uh, it has multiple parts to it, as you can see. So you guys will see exactly how, um, you know, you put this together. So let's just take out the um, rubber washers and the screws and all that stuff. And put that all out so we know ev where everything is. Okay. Put this away. And then for the planetary gears, we are going to use the Traxxas, uh, you know, OEM. Um, you know, they're pretty good. Uh, hardened steel and uh, all that stuff. So we're going to be using Traxxas for that. So let's go ahead and open that up as well. And then basically put everything on the table. Now, uh, this is pretty simple. You guys will see like a bunch of, uh, you know, metal pegs, uh, these right over here. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is take the body of the differential uh, housing. And then what, we're, what we wanna do is uh, go ahead, there's four holes. I don't know if you guys could see that uh, in the differential housing. So what we wanna do is basically put these pegs uh, in these holes. Make sure not to put the pegs in the um, screw holes because obviously you can't do that. Um, then you're not gonna be able to screw anything. So, um, and these pegs don't really go in any particular order. Um, basically, they're all the same size, just like that. And you can put them basically, you know, in any order you want. So the pegs are in. The next step is to take these two washers that came with the differential housing. Um, and what I want to do is I want to uh, loop them up a little bit. Um, so I'm using here silicone grease. This is actually really good uh, grease. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. I think it's like 12 bucks uh, to purchase one, um, but it's really good. It's very thick and it basically does the job exactly, um, you know, like it's supposed to. So this tube is nearly empty. So let's see if we can try to squeeze a little bit of grease out of it. There we go. So just a little bit of grease. And then basically I just want to like, you know, put it in there like that, kind of like bathe it. Okay. Set this aside. Okay. And then take the other washer right here and then again bathe it maybe put a little bit more grease on it there we go okay and then set this aside uh, i want to do the same thing with the other uh, the gaskets the rubber gaskets uh, these are basically what's going to keep your aluminum differential sealed uh, so we want to make sure that we lube these up you know nice because the thing is, when they're uh, dry, they're going to crack and then you're going to have issues. Uh, so basically just seal it. Okay, and just kind of go like this and stretch it out a little bit. Um, and the reason why I'm stretching this out is because when I go ahead and put this in the housing to kind of seal it, um, you know, because it's like a rubber band, um, it's not going to give you like full coverage around the differential housing. Like it's going to be a little bit short. So uh, I kind of stretch it out a little bit, you know, make sure the lube is all nice all over like that. Okay, set this aside and then do the same thing to the next gasket that we have. Okay, so here, there we go. And then, you know, make sure you get good coverage on the grease. And then stretch it out a little bit. Okay, just like that. And then set this aside. Now, the 
rubber washers that I uh, put grease on, what I want to do is I want to take um, these output gears right here and then put it on the output gear. And then this will go in the differential housing just like this. Okay. So put that in nice and snug. And then I can always like push it in with like a screwdriver, make sure it's seated nicely, just like that. Once that part is done, here, uh, this is what we have so far. Once that part is done, you can take the planetary gears, which kind of look like this. Um, and these gears are all exactly the same. And like I said before, they don't need to go in any particular order. Uh, you just want to put them in, the, in those uh, metal pegs. Uh, just slide them in and make sure they're in contact with the output gear that we put in the middle. So you might have to wiggle it a little bit to, you know, for the teeth to intertwine. So again, do the same thing on this one. Uh, no particular order, just like that, okay? And then put these, there we go. It's seated pretty nicely. Now we can test it to make sure that it's actually turning. So with that, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to use a small screwdriver and then put it in the hole of the output shaft and basically just turn it like this. You guys see how this is turning? All the gears are turning. So everything is seated nicely. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but everything is turning pretty nicely. So that part is done. So, oh, actually the last part of this process is there's this tiny peg, uh, you could see it. And this actually goes on top of the out output gear because if you look at the output gear, there's a hole, there's a hole on top. So uh, what we wanna do is basically just put this peg in that hole, just like that. It's a little bit tedious because it's kind of small and you need to have like, uh, you know, pretty tiny hands and it's not going in right now. Okay, so let's take it out. My hands are a little bit sticky because of the grease. Okay, there we go. So now it's seated. And as you can see, I don't know how visible this is on the camera, but everything is seated and you know, it's pretty nice. Um, the other output gear goes on the other end of the housing. So it's this one right here. So we wanna go ahead and put the washer as well as we did with the first one. So just slip the washer in just like that. We already greased it so it's nice and you know ready to go. And then this will go on top of that peg that we installed in the middle on top of the other output gear. And now everything is nicely seated. There we go, everything is turning, perfect. So let's set this aside really quick and then just see if, if there's anything else we need to do. Okay, so the other part of the differential housing is this. This is basically the gear that sits in the middle. So we're gonna wanna put one of the rubber gaskets in here just like this. And remember how we stretched it out before and the reason why we did that is because now we have almost a perfect circle and this you know, fits pretty much like a glove, just like that. And then you can always adjust it with a small screwdriver if you need to. Um, just make sure that the gasket is not interfering with the holes uh, where the screw actually needs to go in because then you're gonna break the gasket and then you're gonna have some leaking you know, issues. So just make sure you know, the holes are pretty much um, you know, out of the way and then just adjust this just like that. Just like that. And perfect. Set this aside. And then we're gonna take the other gasket and then we're gonna put that gasket on here. So just, uh, again, you can uh, use the screwdriver to kind of set it. And make sure the gasket, again, is not uh, in the way of the holes where the screws need to go in. And try to, do, uh, try to make sure as much as you can that the gasket is not touching the gears because if it is, the gears are gonna shred it and then you're gonna have um, you know, a broken gasket which is gonna lead to leaking and we don't want that. Okay, so this is seated pretty nicely as far as I can tell. Now the last step to this process is basically the differential fluid. 
So in this case, I'm gonna be using the 50K differential fluid. It looks like this. So you guys can pick this up for like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that uh, off of Amazon. But I'm gonna go with 50K because in our experience, you know, racing and bashing these things, uh, 50K is really the best of both worlds in terms of bashing and racing. Uh, if you go any higher, you're gonna have some handling issues, you know, on turns and stuff like that. Um, and it's not going to be fun for bashing. It's going to be fun for a straightaway, you know, racing and stuff. But, uh, you know, the formula for us uh, is 50K will allow you to, you know, enjoy it while you're, you know, bashing in the backyard or on the trail or on the track if you're racing it. So, uh, so that's why we chose 50K. So that being said, uh, to apply the differential fluid, I typically don't like to flood it. Um, what I like to do is basically make sure all the gears are coated. That's enough. Uh, you don't need more than that. Uh, so just make sure the gears are coated because if you put too much uh, oil, um, obviously when you're running it, you're going to have some, you know, overheating and then, you know, the oil is going to expand and contract and this and that. Um, and if you have uh, a lot of oil in there, if you flooded it, uh, you might experience some leaking. So what you want to do is, uh, basically just, uh, go around the gears, uh, just like this and make sure all the gears are coated. Okay. So we're doing that like that. Boom. Okay, make sure the top output shaft is coated as well. And uh, that's pretty much it, just like that. Okay, and then the next part for this process is to take the center gear, just like this, and make sure when you put it in, you align it with the holes because this only goes one way. And if you do not align it, it's not gonna go together, um, you know, good. So this is, looks to me pretty aligned. I can see the, you know, on the other end of the holes. So that's good. One last time, I'd like to adjust the gasket just to make sure everything's out of the way, just like that. And then the final step to this process is to take the other part of the differential housing. And now what we want to do is we want to align it. This process is a little bit tedious because, uh, you know, you can't really be off. Otherwise, this whole thing will not go together. So just put it like that. And maybe you, uh, you might have to kind of like, uh, there we go. Just wiggle it a little bit and uh, this will go into place. Actually, I feel like it's not really um, seated properly. Let me see. Okay, so. So let me take this out because I feel like it's not in just right. Okay. Okay, one of the one of the packs came out, so let's put that back in. Okay, just like that. Let's make sure it spins. There you go. Everything is spinning. Okay. So this looks like, looks, looks good to me. And then uh, just put the gasket back. Okay, so there you go. It went together just fine. Uh, now the next step and the final step actually is uh, to go ahead and put the screws in. Now you want a Loctite or put thread locker on these screws um, because if you don't, this is metal on aluminum and almost guaranteed uh, they're gonna come out. They're gonna back out and you're gonna have uh, you know a pretty uh, you know an oily mess basically on your hands. So what I did here is I put the first screw. I didn't put thread locker on it just to, to kind of hold this together. And now all the screws I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna go ahead and put some thread locker. And then the, the one screw that I did not put thread locker on, I'll take it out at the end. And then, um, and then uh, you know, I'll put some thread locker. So just a dab, just like that, okay? And you wanna make sure this is tight, by the way, but don't like over tighten, don't go crazy because you don't want, um, you know, for this to be like too tight where there's, you know, zero movement 
Um, so just, you know, hand tight just like that with thread locker and you'll be fine. And then let's do the other screw. And then some thread locker as well. Just like that. So just, there you go, almost done. My hand are a little bit sticky because of the, um, the grease, which doesn't really help because, uh, you know, sticky fingers, things tend to stick on them. Okay, so actually, I forgot to put thread locker on this screw. So let's go ahead and put the thread locker. By the way, this is, you know, for me personally, this is the, the most fun part of the hobby is basically modifying and, you know, working on the, on the cars. Uh, I actually enjoy it more than actually, you know, bashing or racing, although that's fun as well. Um, let's go ahead and take out the screw that we did not put any thread locker on and put some thread locker. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty fun for me. I mean, obviously, I do enjoy taking the cars to the track every once in a while, but uh, usually I like to, you know, be at the workbench, you know, working on these things when I have some time. And this is the final step. And boom, done. So let's go ahead and clean this up. You know, I mentioned that we do sell these in our shop, uh, complete with the 50,000 uh, diff fluid and, you know, planetary gears, you know, basically plug and play. Um, so this is basically the process that I wanted to show you guys uh, that goes into, you know, building one of these. And usually the ones that we sell online, like after this process, we would take it to the polisher and, you know, we polish them up uh, just so they look nice. And that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. Uh, also, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.